continuing on with some more introduction to representing data, how it's stored. Uh, we have uh, entities in review. We have entities in the uh, real world, and we can identify those in, in different formats. For example, this, this body of water, uh, we may have an interest in uh, its size for recreational usage, you know, big enough for boating, etc. Or we may be interested in only it being a point in that it's a source for, for uh, drinking water. So the same object could be, uh, could be stored uh, differently. We could have a polygon layer for that area and uh, another layer right on top of a uh, municipal water source. Often we have a one-to-one -one correspondence uh, between an entity and a real world. So here's a, uh, again, infrared photography here. Um, and we're looking at this particular building in a one-to-one -one correspondence to uh, polygons on the map. So one-to-one -one again. Uh, we may force uniformity to these. For example, uh, here this could be a a polygon which incorporates this entire area uh, is defined as, as residential and uh, second polygon uh, identified as, uh, as a park and the third polygon identified as commercial area. So with, with vectors, um, one of the things that you become aware of is that a point doesn't have any dimension so and lines don't have any width. A uh, good example here is that we have aerial photography which which shows a road through here and we're we've got a, a line on top of it so the the line identifies the road and the aerial photography identifies the road. So as we as we zoom in uh, you can see that the the wide road actually has a zero width line. Uh, here, again, forcing some uniformity, um, this is a, an aerial photography, and over the top of the aerial photography, we're constructing some, some polygons. Um, these may be, you know, flower gardens on campus, for example. So here, uh, kind of the question is, um, is this one flower garden? Uh, it obviously has a sidewalk running through it, or is it three flower gardens? So would we... Uh, draw a line across here and make this little half moon shape, uh, one garden, and then this sector, another garden, and then this third one. So we we have to make these decisions to determine whether um, this would be three polygons in one case, or uh, as in the case over here, that, uh, you know, how big is this flower garden? Well, these sidewalks are actually included in the in the flower bed. The other thing that happens is that as you zoom in, I mean, this is uh, you know, kind of a, uh, uh, a smooth shape, but as you zoom in, you can see that um, it's actually made up of straight lines. So as we created this polygon, we click, click, click around the edge and sort of give it kind of a close fit. So we're, we're making some approximations. We're including some things that aren't really there and we're making some decisions about um, definitions. Uh, raster things, uh, looking at here, you've got coordinates, uh, X and Y, the dimensions of a cell, their fixed size, and they're laid out in a grid. Um, we can have what might be called a discrete, so these, these have individual um, values, so these are all agricultural pixels, um, or these may be continuous in terms of uh, these may be elevation pixels. So this is the elevation as you as you uh, scan around. So I'm going to give you kind of an idea of one of the the problems here is that the resolution can be an issue. So if we're talking about the land cover here, um, obviously. Um, B is we would make a determination that that's water. And so we'd be in uh, an error in these little pieces here on this side and that side, but, but typically it's pretty much um, a water category. Um, a looks pretty much um, all land base, all looks like farmland, etc. except these looks like farmer's fields and this could be some forest area. So there is um, 
questions that we have to answer. Number C here looks like half, uh, half farm and half water, or maybe a little bit more farm. So we, we have to make some decisions that identify and create some errors. So as you, um, as you get smaller, so for example, uh, if we have four 100 meter cells, then um, those de decisions would be more important, but we'd only have four cells that we'd have to deal with. Uh, as you get uh, smaller, the storage space goes up um, anymore. We're not too concerned with storage space. The only problem that we can get into is we may need to worry about uh, the total amount of data if we're producing something that's going to be interactive on the on website. I think you'll see very quickly that you know some characteristics, some maps will load very slowly because they have so much data. So we have to kind of look at how much data we are, are displaying um, to the user at each, at each frame so that we maybe would even have uh, different resolutions for, for different, um, uh, different zooms, if you will, of, in the map. Okay, so vectors and, and rasters, um, we can be pretty precise with position um, and then rasters are cell size. Um, continuous data works better in, in raster. Um, we can have pretty complex data structures here, very simple ones here, storage relatively small, very large, and so on. Um, so this is big, so when we want to analyze what's going on, the vectors are easily handled, so that's uh, uh, real important. And in in a raster, it's it's kind of kind of difficult. And we can convert one way uh, back and forth. So, example, if we have a, a stream or a road or something that is identified uh, in a raster characteristic, uh, uh, using the software, we can go to creating cell center points, and then taking those center points and just smoothing them into a line. Uh, correspondingly, from a vector standpoint, we have a, a stream here that's identified by a group of lines. We can identify what pixels those lines intersect with and color code those. So we can go backwards, uh, back and forth between these two